So I'll be surprised that I'm still alive mm -hmm. every day. How did you not so-called <laughs> disappear? Because, you know, because I'm God. Last week, Kanye West made an appearance on Big Boy TV with Ty Dollar Sign talking about his most recent album, Vultures. Now, if you've been following Kanye's faith journey, you'll be familiar with this album, Jesus is King, and his clean album to follow, Donda. However, with Vultures, the theme of Christianity seemingly has gone out the window, and this was kind of talked about on uh, this big boy's podcast. So let's jump right into it. You know, at one point, yay, we hear, and this is all you, we hear, you know, Jesus is King. We hear this, but that's all you. Then there's sometimes you just want to say, man, not it, but you just want to say, man, this is what I'm feeling right now. Are you in that space where you're comfortable enough to say, this is where I am right now. I'm still a man of God. I'm, Jesus still is King. But this is vultures right now. This is where I am. Okay, so 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 before we even get started, the premise of the question is kind of like a, it's a very worldly approach to to this kind of thing, and I, I just wanted to talk about this first before we even get into Kanye's response. Is the way that this question is set up is so much of of how the world likes to take things and, and how we like to think about how we act is like kind of like abusing grace. If that makes sense. So we, so we know the things that we should do. We, we know how our lives should look like. We know how that they should be. But then there are times where we become selfish and we want to work on things that we care about. Things that we um, put um, on the pedestal of our lives. And then we say, Jesus is still king, but he's just not king over this certain area of our lives. And that's the way, I think that's the way that this question is being set up, is that is that Jesus is still king over Kanye's life, but just not king over vultures, because this is this is Kanye's thing now. Um, so yeah, the, pr the premise of the question is, is flawed in of itself. And you would hope that Kanye would kind of point that out and be like, whoa, whoa, but... He take, Kanye, Kanye takes a, a, a worse approach than, than the question was even phrased. So um, let's go into it. It is, but I, you know, I, I have my issues with Jesus. There's a lot of stuff I went through that I prayed and I didn't see Jesus show up. So I had to put my, uh, my experience in this world, my experience with my children, my experience with other people, my experience with my account, my experience with my brand, and my experience with the level of music that I was dealing with in my own hands. Mm -hmm. Like a, a lot of times I just feel like in our society, in America, you know, people, Christians, we depend on Jesus so much that we won't put the word in ourselves. And the main thing that really that I, I don't rock with is like, it's just always like, I'm gonna pray for you. And it's just like, you can actually physically do something yourself too, more than just pray. And we're so, in this mentality that's that's all that needs to happen but we ain't we ain't praying our way out of prison mm -hmm. we ain't praying our way out of the abortion clinics we ain't praying our way to get our land back that was always ours after gentrification after the harlem uh renaissance and black wall street was burned mm -hmm. to the ground them prayers ain't working we're going we have to apply actual physical building partnerships and it, and it don't start unless we could really be real with each other and say this is what I did this is what I did like I mean look at this I know I'm not gonna third rail your interview but look at the power of what happened when me and Kyrie was on the same page see that's what's scary but what they do is they put us each in a silo and say your grandmother gonna lose her crib and this gonna you know how many threats we've been dealt dealt with and I am so I think this is a valid critique in that Sure. Christians, they do tend to make this kind of blanket statement is, oh, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. And that's good. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not I'm not saying that prayer is a bad thing. There there are always situations. The Bible says to pray continually, to pray without ceasing. So the the argument that 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 we pray too much is not exactly a good argument to be had. But also the argument that we use prayer as a cop-out is also something 
that I think that Christians should take a note. St. Augustine said, pray as though everything depended on God, but work as though everything depended on you. I mean, there, there's a story that I was told back in um, junior church, and George actually, George Jenko, um, and George Jenko actually just mentioned it on one of his podcasts a couple um, a, a couple pods ago, is he talked about this this man who, there was a hurricane coming, there, there was this massive storm, and, and the flood started, and he's he's walking around, and he's just like, okay, God's going to save me from this. God's going to save me from this. Praying, praying, praying. And then um, a military Humvee comes by, and they're like, hey, so we're doing extraction. We need to get out of here because the flooding is going to get really bad, and you're going to die. Um, so come on, let's get out of here. And he's like, nah, okay, I'll stay here. God's got me. And then a little, a little, um, little single engine motorboat comes, comes, um, puttering in like, Hey, Hey man, um, it's time to go. There's hardly any ground to stand on at this point. You're going to die if you don't come with us, let's go. And then, um, the guy's like, no, God's going to save me. So then he's sitting on top of his house and the coast guard boat comes in and like, come on, man, (laughs) we got to get out of here. You're going to die. And he's like, no, no, no. God's going to save me. God's going to save me. And then a helicopter comes and he's standing on on the top of his roof and the helicopter comes down and he's like, they're like, Hey, come on. It's time to go. We're going to, we're going to save you. And then, and then the guy's like, no, God's going to save me. And then the next thing you know, he dies (laughs) because, because he didn't take any action, um, towards the prayers that were being asked. He gets to heaven and he's like, God, why didn't you save me? And he's all angry with God and all, all this. And God's like, what do you mean I didn't save you? I first sent you a guy in the Humvee. I sent you a guy in the little boat. In the little boat. I sent you the Coast Guard vessel. I sent you the helicopter. Wh- what more did you want me to do? Did you, did you want me to pick you up and plop you over on dry land? Like I gave you every option and you just didn't do the work that was required. Faith without works is dead as evidence in James. So, so the critique that, that Christians use prayer as a cop out is, is definitely a valid critique. And, and I'm not even going to act like I'm not guilty of this is there are definitely times when, when there are things that could be done to help someone and the easy cop out Christian answer is, Oh, I'll pray for you. Now, on the flip side of that, when he talks about the, that these certain prayers aren't being answered and whatnot, every prayer, prayer is answered. It's, it's either answered by yes, it's answered by no, or by not yet. So, if he's experiencing this, this no, God's not answering this prayer because he wants to show Kanye something, or, or God's saying not yet, the, the deliverance from these things will come, but not, not yet, you still need to, there, there's still some growth to be had. I, I know many situations in my life where I'm praying for certain things, certain relationships to go over well, like, God, please, please don't let my eighth grade girlfriend break up with me. And then the, the next thing you know, she did. No is an answer to a prayer. It's not that prayers don't get answered. It says that most of the time prayers don't get answered in the way that we like because God's ways are higher than ours. Um, so it's really sad to see this, but let's continue. And pray my way through them threats either. I had to get up and do it myself. I had so much to do, I ain't had time why to not pray. Do it with God. Not only are we talking about why music, not, but... Why not pray alongside of the actions? This is a common misconception too, is, is that prayer needs to be you kneeling on the ground and like, like making a whole like ritual about it. It's like, no, that quiet time does matter. That quiet time by your bedside or in your prayer closet or wherever it be, it does matter. But people act like it can't just be like a simple day-to-day conversation. There was a time something happened in my church and I got a text message and it was literally two words. Is that somebody quit. Literally dropped my phone and I have friends that were there that can attest to this. I said, God, now what? And I could just feel him say, go home. And then I looked around and, and then one of my friends was like, she was like, yeah, go home. And I, I didn't even say anything. She was just like, go, go home. You, th- This needs to happen. So it's not that you, there's always time to pray. Yeah, I, that's, that's such a cop out, man. That's such a cop out. There's two jokes. One joke uh, that a friend of mine, I'm not going to you know put on blast just because it's just about the joke more than it's about the name. Um, <laughs> He says, you, he, he is a manager, he said, you know what I hate about artists? Um, they take 80% of my money. 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. And the other joke they had is, um, what will we do if artists figured out their own distribution? And the punchline is, we'd have to kill them. So I'd be surprised that I'm still alive mm -hmm. every day. How did you not so-called <laughs> disappear? Like, cause that's a hell of a fight. Cause, you know, cause I'm God. And anyone to disagree, I'm the God of me. And you can't mm. tell me who I am. I can't tell y'all. I could tell y'all. It's y'all job to listen. I'm the God of me. I don't know if I'm in heaven already and shit. I got number one. From that. For all you know, I might be on like a fourth on, dimension man. version of a lifestyle. <laughs> you know, I don't Come know. Like on. I said, I must have died in this accident. It must be. This is why we can't be too celebratory when our favorite celebrities, I'm not saying that he's my favorite celebrity, but this is why we can't be too celebratory of when, when our favorite celebrities uh, announce that they are Christian. Because look at, come on, man. It's sad, but it's not surprising. And the, 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 these people are living in a different echelon of life than, than most of us could ever dream of, right? And, and they're being fed things that would make them think that they are God, that, that they are the most important thing on planet Earth to them. Their entire lives are revolve around them. They don't really have a community where the heart of that community is service, i.e. a church. Their, their entire communities are centered around building their lives, about, uh, about making the name Kanye glorified, about making that number one album glorified. And... and they don't have the right community structure around them, and it is sad, but it's not something that we should be like losing our minds about, um, in, that, in that it's not surprising. But that doesn't mean we should stop praying for them. I, Kanye was so close. I remember my Bible teacher, freshman year of high school, he, he was blasting the Jesus is his King album. Um, and I was hesitant. I was skeptical. I was like, Kanye? Kanye? <laughs> you know? The, the 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 Kim Kardashian that that Kanye, he's making a, G, a Jesus is King album. I I didn't really know how much I believed that it was even happening. <laughs> it was all a fever dream, and, and I was like, hey man, just I'm just a little bit skeptical, and I'll probably text him after this and be like, hey, you see you see all this stuff that Kanye's doing right now. Um, but yeah, um, continue praying for him. And, and I know that this was a topic of conversation that he's talking about. Oh, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. There's nothing that really I can do to go out of my way to make Kanye's life better, to help him and build him a community. But we, what we can do is us, us, us mere mortals, because we are in a world with evidently uh, God. Um, what we can do is we can pray that somebody else, somebody more influential than we are, comes into his life, and they give him the right tools. They put him on the right track to find the community that's necessary to to get out of that mindset that I am the God of me because that's a dangerous place to be and you don't you don't want to be stuck there so yeah that's all I've got for today as always the merch will be linked in the description of course it is for our lovely sponsored child Ayla um, she's turning five very soon can't wait for that um, if you have anything once again that you'd like to tell her tell her you're thinking of her tell her you're praying for her let me know down in the comment section below and we'll be sure to send it in our next letter to her that's about all that i have time for today though this has been counterculture a show designed to equip you with the scripture necessary to counter the culture around you i'll see you next week